Hi, I'm Janelle Maloney, and today I'm in Buffalo, Wyoming, and I'm exploring the Jim Gatchel Memorial Museum. But before I go in, I want to point something out really, really quick. So come in close. Come on, come on even closer. I want you to take a look at the sign right down here at the bottom. Get in close, read it. It says that this museum is funded, paid for by the optional 1% sales tax. And I think that's really important to point out because I'm a voter and sometimes when I see stuff and it's like, oh, that's an optional whatever and 1% and, and I feel like, don't take my money and it's optional and whatever. But this is really important. This is really, really important that these museums and historical sites are being preserved and your money is going to this preservation. Your money is going towards keeping history alive and it matters. So for those who elected yes, who said yes and continue to give and support historical organizations like the Jim Gatcher Museum, thank you. I'm telling you thank you because that means I get to go there today and I get to explore and I get to be enriched and learn things and just have a great time and also to take you. So let's go, let's go check out the museum now. That is so beautiful. Wow. So I just went down to the first gallery room at the Jim Gatchel Memorial Museum and I um, kind of have a little thing for this print shop that they have set up and I found it interesting on the little label they said that news, the word N-E-W-S, news, stands for word from the north, word from the east, word from the west, and word from the south. And yes, north, east, west, south does spell news. I have a different theory. I think we all know what's the new information. What do you have that's new to tell? And that turns into, tell me the news. And so I beg to differ. I have no empirical evidence for this, but um, let's just agree to disagree. I'm standing next to a pronghorn antelope or as uh, being corrected here, just the pronghorn. And um, while I've been off-roading through the Oregon Trail um, experience in Eastern Wyoming, I have seen so many of these beauties and they're on the side of the road, they're running across the road, they're going up and over the hills and it's just really uh, majestic and picturesque. And they have right now um, lots of little babies and mommies and they're so cool, they're so beautiful. But the minute I spy them, I go, oh, let me get my camera out. And then all I can see is their uh, little white tushies <laughs> over the far end of the hill. Um, so this is about as close as I can get to a uh, semi-real one. Since I'm close enough, I get to see what do they sound like? It's what my dad sounds like after a burrito. Thank you for letting me touch things. Ooh. I love museums that let me touch stuff. Oh, wow. That is remarkably soft. I love immersive exhibits like this. So there's one here in this um, Oregon Trail emigrant cove, and you can see the map behind me and some of the sites that immigrants may have seen as they're coming up. If they're going um, west, if they're going north to Montana, they're gonna be having a bit of a rough ride. I think this spine is really funny and uh, even though I've studied it, I still crack up at these little jokes. It says that on the Bozeman Trail, there's no ice or ice cream. And honestly, I was like, yeah, I know, that's really sad. I love this wall. It has like these little two-sided quotes. So you can see one perspective and then roll it around and see another perspective. 
and they're very they're competing so this wall of shifting perspectives might make you a little uncomfortable might give you some feels This last little quote really gets me. So I'm gonna read it to you in case you missed it. It says it's a quote from an old chief to John Jacobs and John Bozeman. And this old chief lays down the law and he says, you can't go in this direction. The only good big hunting ground left to us. Your people have taken the rest and scared the game away. If you will turn back to the plat, we will let you go. We will not hurt you. But if you go into our hunting country, our people will wipe you out. Whoa. Hey, where was that quote when I was writing this book? That's so good. The curators at the Jim Gatchel Memorial Museum do an excellent job making sure that we don't just see a box full of stuff, but there's really good storytelling in each box. In fact, I'm gonna swing you around here. It's the stories of the women pioneers and a good. This one chick behind me, she got herself in a little bit of trouble with uh, the locals because she wasn't so well behaved. She made whiskey and that was enough to get her in trouble. Even though we can't hear their voices, we really get an essence. There's selections from letters, there's quotes from different newspapers or people commenting. I love these stories because, well, as a woman, I like to see myself being represented. I like to think, what was it like back then? And um, it gives me an opportunity to see myself or think of what I might have gotten in trouble for back then. And here's where I go into full-on fangirl mode because I'm about to go into the gallery that is featuring, um, well, artifacts and images and things from the Johnson County Wars or the Cattle Wars as they're sometimes referred to. And I had the privilege um, recently to interview a descendant of Jack Flagg who was part of the Johnson County Cattle Wars. And so I'm kind of gonna fangirl and nerd out in there. <laughs> I love all the interactive maps. I help you really understand the sequence of events. So it's one thing to have just a map showing you like a Jackson Pollock and all the stuff at once, but they have a really nice interactive map explaining what's going on during the Johnson County War. So you can slide out and move through time and see each portion of the story come together. I love that. They also have this really amazing map and it's cute and creative of the um, Bozeman Trail. And I was able to use that in my book, Emigrant Tales of the Platte River Raids. So thank you so much for your incredible map making and making it so easy to understand, fun to understand, fun to look at even. Isn't it a beautiful piece of work? I'm hoping that someday we're all in good condition. Sit and listen. Behind me, Jim Gatchel's explaining his pharmacy and each light turns on to point out something very specific that he wants to talk about <laughs> and I love this um, there's definitely there's seats you'll want to sit down and listen to him tell you all about what's inside his shop and why is it why is it there why does it matter oh my goodness the exhibit's really cute and good good on them for using their theater skills because when the lights flash I realize I didn't see that before um, even though it's all there it's just dimmed I love this kind of stuff there's just such a great immersive, um, interactive selection of things to do here. I was just in another gallery that talks about the Basque people and what their contributions to Buffalo are. And I didn't realize there was a huge population of the Basque. And so that was really cool to see their dancing costumes and where they were coming from and how they contributed to shepherding here. It's really cool seeing the Life of Verna exhibit here at the Jim Gatchel Museum, primarily because I got to meet a descendant of Verna Keys, and we got to talk about her contributions via artwork to the design on the Wyoming State flag. And so 
Um, I'll put a, a link in with the notes on where you can see that interview because I was able to really get in and talk about her contributions and a little bit of the drama involved in that story. But it's really cool to be here and to see her artwork up close. Man, is she talented. This is where I start to get all uh, irreverent on a Sunday too. Goodness. See this sculpture? The title is When All Cheeks Are Tight. And uh, I didn't understand it for a minute. Well, that was fun. So if you're headed up to uh, Buffalo, Wyoming, definitely make this one of your stops. The Jim Gatcha Memorial Museum has multiple floors. So it might look kind of small from the outside of the street view, but there's a lot going on inside and it's definitely worth pulling over and uh, supporting this organization for all the work that they do to preserve Johnson County history. I'm so glad I stopped and uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the museum and what exhibit was your favorite. bit because there's people in another room being like that author is here and she's making videos i love this stuff i heard them say i wonder what she's gonna post <laughs>